Welcome to the FDM 3D Printer training video. This video training and its corresponding quiz are necessary for you to be able to use the CraftBot FDM 3D printers here at the Ingram Hall Makerspace, and will give you a basic understanding of 3D printer operation and safety. FDM printing is an additive manufacturing process that takes plastic filament, melts it, and lays it down in successive layers to create an object of the user's choosing or design. In recent years, the cost of this technology has dropped significantly, leading to its widespread adoption, while the overall capability and quality of the process has improved, allowing for its use beyond the prototyping stage. Let's look at the general workflow for 3D printing. You first need to design a part or find an already made part online. There are many 3D model databases online that include Thingiverse, GrabCAD, Cults 3D, and Thangs, to name a few. We highly recommend that you create your own design and only use these databases for inspiration or examples. To create your own part, the university provides access to a variety of programs, but we recommend SolidWorks, Fusion 360, and Inventor, with SolidWorks being the industry standard. Once you've found or modeled your part, you're going to need it in a .3MF or .STL format. We recommend 3MF whenever possible. Either export the file in your modeling software or download the file from your database. You will then determine the type of material and specifications of printer you need to produce your part. There are many materials to choose from, each with their own pros and cons. But the Makerspace provides free PETG for students in a variety of colors listed here. The Makerspace also has two types of printers available to students, CraftBot XLs and CraftBot 3XLs. This video and quiz will give you access to the CraftBot XLs used for single material or single color printing of up to 300 by 200 by 440 millimeters. To gain access to the CraftBot 3XLs, allowing for dual color printing, filaments besides PETG, and a larger print area, complete this training and quiz and then move on to the advanced 3D printer training video. Now that we've determined our material and printer, we're going to slice the file using an appropriate program. Slicing specifically refers to using a CAM or computer-aided manufacturing software designed for 3D printing. This will convert your model from a 3D file to a series of commands that the printer will follow called G-code. It will also include any settings relevant to your material or printer. After saving this file, you will check out a printer using only the provided flash drive. Details on how to slice a model are covered later in this video. At this point, you will attach the flash drive to the printer and load in the proper filament for your part. Perform any necessary calibrations and then begin printing. This process could take anywhere from several hours to several days, so plan accordingly. You are required to monitor the status of the print for the first 30 minutes and until the first layer is complete. You will then check out of the makerspace and return when your part is complete. Now let's learn some terminology about the printer. Here we can see a CraftBot XL, our single material printer. This part here is the print bed, which is a heated plate that we'll be printing onto. Temperatures for this part are regularly above 60 degrees Celsius and can burn you, so be careful around it. Here's the hot end and nozzle of the printer, which will heat the plastic and compress it to the right diameter. This part of the printer operates above 180 degrees Celsius, so be extra careful around this part. Above that, we can find the extruder. The extruder pushes and pulls filament out of the hot end, depending on which part of the object is being printed. There are a number of fans attached to the extruder. Here is the hot end fan, which cools portions of the hot end so the plastic only melts at the proper points. On the sides here are part cooling fans. These fans can be programmed to activate during your printing process to quickly cool the plastic as it leaves the nozzle. This allows for increased overhang in your parts and will maintain the overall shape. On the back of the printer is the filament spool holder, where the filament is stored and allowed to freely unwind during printing. Lastly, this is the touchscreen controller for the printer. Let's learn how to operate this next. In the top left corner, we can find the temperature controls for the printer. Tap on this to open the full menu controls. At the bottom, there are options to select your type of material and set the proper temperature, in our case, PETG. This is crucial to ensuring a proper print, as using the wrong temperatures can lead to under extrusion or losing the shape of your print. Make sure to also set the proper temperatures in your slicer settings, covered later in this video. Once we've selected the proper material, tap the hot end symbol and or the bed symbol. The printer will then heat to and maintain the set temperatures. 
Now let's look at the movement controls. Select the back button and then hit the axes button in the bottom center of the screen. Here we can control the X, Y, and Z position of the printer. By selecting any of these directions, we can home the printer. The printer will then move that axis slowly in the direction of its origin point until it hits an end stop switch. At this point, the printer will know where it is and be able to move to positions accurately down to 50 microns. We can also select the crossbars here at the bottom of the menu and move each position manually. This is particularly useful for moving the bed out of the way when prepping your hot end for printing. Remember, the bed and nozzle get very hot, so avoid coming into contact with them when they're at operating temperatures. Speaking of which, at this point, our printer should be preheated. If we navigate back to the main menu of our printer, we can select the extruder menu option at the top right of the screen. These controls will allow us to temporarily control the flow of filament. This is useful for priming the material, checking the integrity of your filament, and changing spools. There are two options for controlling extrusion. You can either press and hold the extrude or reverse options, which will push or pull filament from the hot end, or you can select the presets for loading and unloading filament that will take care of the process for you. We always recommend using the presets as they will properly unload the filament by extruding before reversing. First, we're going to verify that our nozzle is still preheated. If it's timed out and stopped heating, navigate back to the temperature controls and re-enable the nozzle heat. Hit the load filament button and then check that filament is properly flowing out of the nozzle. It should look like a continuous stream of filament that coils nicely underneath the nozzle. If you're seeing an inconsistent stream, hearing clicking, or no filament is coming out, ask your friendly neighborhood MST for help. Lastly, we're going to discuss the settings menu. Please do not use any of the options in the settings menu until you've completed the advanced FDM printer training module. This menu has many options for calibrating the printer, which are helpful for MSTs who are managing the equipment. However, we ask that you leave the calibration and adjustments to us and ask for our assistance if you need adjustments made to a printer. Now that we've learned the basics of the CraftBot XL, let's take a look at Cura, the corresponding slicer software. To start, open any computer or laptop in RPM or download the Cura software onto your personal computer. First off, let's create a printer with the proper parameters. If you've already set up the IHM's CraftBot XL profile, go ahead and hit the button below to skip this part. Otherwise, in the top left, select the drop down and select Add Printer. Navigate to the non networked printers and select Custom. Ensure Custom FFF Printer is selected and name this profile CraftBot XL. Go ahead and copy the settings shown on screen to your profile paying careful attention to the XYZ values and the G-code flavor. We recommend pausing the video while you do this. Next, navigate to the Extruder 1 tab and ensure that your settings match. Once you've verified both tabs, complete the Create Printer process by hitting the Next tab. Next, let's import our material settings and print profiles. First, make sure to download both sets of files from directly below this video. Select the Material tab in the center and navigate to the Manage Materials option. Here we can see all materials currently in our library. Go ahead and click Import and navigate to the IHM Overture PETG file. Select Open and then hit OK. You've now successfully added the material settings. Hit Close and then navigate to the Print Settings tab. Press the Custom button and then select the Profile dropdown and hit Manage Profiles. Once again, select Import and navigate to the three profiles you downloaded earlier. Import the FAST file, and then repeat for standard and high quality. Hit Close and ensure your printer is set to CraftBot XL. Then set your material to IHM stock PETG found under the Overture tab. You've now finished setup of Cura for use of the CraftBot XLs. Next, let's look at adding and orienting our parts for printing. Add your part or parts by using the folder icon at the top left or drag and dropping your parts into Cura. 
The first thing we're going to do is ensure that our part fits on the bed of the CraftBot Excel. The gray bounding box underneath it represents the print bed, and the blue outline represents the vertical print area we have to work with. If your part is outside of either of these, it will be represented by the hatch pattern seen here. In the case of this part, we just need to rotate it to make it fit. Select your part by clicking on it. If you need to pivot your view first, hold down right click. To pan your view, either use shift and right click or the middle mouse button. Now that your part is selected, let's navigate to the rotate tab on the left. Click and drag the axis that you will need until your part fits on the bed. We can also scale our parts. Navigate up one tab and then either use the sliders by clicking or dragging or enter a percentage. You can deselect uniform scale if you need to stretch or compress your part along only one axis. Lastly, select the Move tab and move your part to where you need it. If you determine that none of these adjustments are applicable to your part, take a look at whether the increased print area of the CraftBot 3 Excels will fix your problem, or go back to the drawing board and determine how to print your part in multiple pieces. Now that we have our part within the print area of the bed, Let's orient it for best printing. 3D printers print from the bottom of the part and work their way up in successive layers, so we need to make sure that each layer is supported by portions of the part underneath it. We can print with an overhang, but each increase in the angle of overhang increases the amount of filament that will droop and decreases the accuracy of your part. We also need to ensure good adhesion of the part to the bed, so we're going to orient the largest and flattest part of the print onto the bed. We can select the Rotate tab and then the Select Face to Align to the Bed button. Select your face and ensure that this orientation will minimize drooping of your part. If you still have portions of your part that you're afraid will droop, complete this training and move on to the Advanced FDM Printer Training to learn about supports. Now that we have our print orientation set, you can multiply your part if needed. Right click on the object you want to multiply and select Multiply Selected. Enter the number of additional parts you need and select OK. Once again, verify everything fits within the print area. If not, you can right click on your parts and select Arrange All Models. If some of them are outside the print area, repeat the earlier steps or remove some parts to be printed later. Now that our parts are all set and oriented properly, let's determine which preset we want to print with. Navigate back to the Print Settings tab and open the Profile dropdown. IHM provides three easy to pick from presets for you to use for your print. CraftBot Standard, High Quality, and Fast. Fast will print quickly, but at the expense of strength and quality. Similarly, a high quality print will be strong and aesthetically pleasing, but take longer to print. We recommend using the Standard preset, as it provides ample strength for a majority of parts, and using the other presets only as needed. If you feel like your part needs greater strength or speed than these presets provide, take the advanced FDM printer training module to gain access to specialty nozzle sizes, different infill patterns, and more. Once you've selected your profile, navigate out of the Print Settings tab, hit Slice, and let Kira process the G-code. Depending on the complexity of your print, this may take some time. Once completed, navigate to the Preview tab to see a rendering of the process the printer will go through to print your part. Using the scroll bars at the right and bottom, we can scroll through the different layers to double check that our print will complete properly and that our infill is set accordingly. An important detail to note before printing is the filament length in the bottom right. IHM provides 25 meters per print to students for free. If your current length is over that amount, you can scale down your part, remove parts to be printed, or ask an MST for a 3D printer override form. If approved, this will allow you to print more than the 25 meter limit. Once you're under the limit and you've verified that your part will print correctly, select a printer you'd like and ask an MST to check it out for you. They will hand you the corresponding flash drive, which you will insert into the computer running Kira. Select the Save G Code button in the bottom right and save your completed G Code file onto the flash drive. Ensure that the file copied correctly, then eject and remove the flash drive from the computer. Take the flash drive to the printer you've checked out and insert it into the USB cable on the top of the printer. 
make sure to only use the flash drive in the corresponding printer. If you need to move printers or need multiple printers, you'll need to check those printers out as well. Now let's perform our final checks before beginning our print. Ensure that your printer is heated properly as discussed previously in this video. Select the load filament button to extrude filament and ensure that it is flowing properly. Again, if the stream is inconsistent, you hear clicking or no filament is coming out, ask your friendly neighborhood MST for help. In order to properly print your part, the distance between the nozzle and the bed needs to be consistent across the print area and set the proper distance. Verify with an MST before printing that this has been done, and then select USB print, and navigate to the part you're going to print. Tap the print button, and then the printer will begin the process, first by heating to the proper temperatures, and then homing all three axes. After that, your part will begin printing. Stay with the print for the first 30 minutes and until the first layer completes, as this is the time when the part is most likely to fail. This is an example of a proper first layer with good adhesion. If your first layer begins to look like any of these examples instead, ask an MST and they will help to level your bed and or troubleshoot any additional issues with your printer. After your first layer and 30 minutes are up, you may leave your print unsupervised and or check out of the makerspace. Make sure to take note of the time remaining on the printer so you can return to the makerspace to collect your part during business hours. To do so, let the print bed cool down to at least 40 degrees. At this point, you can try removing the print from the bed by pulling up on it. If it does not come off the bed easily, grab a putty knife and gently pry a corner of your print up. Continue from there, making sure to not damage the print bed or your part. If this proves difficult, ask an MST for help and they will be happy to assist you. Once you have your part removed from the bed, remove any excess filament from the bed and clean out the bottom of the printer. 3D printer plastic recycling is available in RPM. Please ensure you only put PETG in the PETG bin. Once complete, take your flash drive to the front desk and ask an MST to check the printer back in. They will verify the condition of the printer and the amount of filament used, and then record that amount on your file. Once this is done, make sure you check in any other equipment you have, and then you're free to leave the makerspace. This concludes the FDM 3D printer training video. You are now ready to take the corresponding quiz. If you have any questions, make sure to re-watch portions of this video or ask an MST for help. If you're taking this quiz outside of the IHM, you can also email ingrammakerspace at txstate.edu with questions.